Hey friends, what's going on? We have been working on building out this tool for automating parts of the video production process and getting things on YouTube. Uh, specifically, being able to sync YouTube, uh, like videos for YouTube descriptions and thumbnails for YouTube descriptions. But today what we're gonna do is uh, show how to deploy this app to Heroku. Um, so I have a, a Heroku account already set up, um, but I'm actually gonna use the Heroku tool belt, which is something that you can install um, and it is a command line interface for working with Heroku. And this is almost exclusively how I generally prefer to work with Heroku is through the, the tool belt here. Um, and so you can just install with Homebrew uh, if, you're, if you're using Homebrew. Otherwise, uh, you can do a lot of this stuff through the, the web interface for the Heroku dashboard, but I want to do it through the terminal. So I'm gonna say Heroku uh, apps create, and then I'm just gonna call this one like video auto or like auto video or something. Um, and this is going to create the app and give it the name auto video. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't mean app create, I meant apps create. Um, so I, I often forget what the exact commands are, but um, so audio video is already taken. Auto video, automate, automate video. Let's see. Okay, so automate video, we were able to create the app. And what that does is it creates a remote. So I have I have the, the origin, which is, um, that's where I'm pushing up my Git repo to GitHub where it's hosted, but there's an, a new remote called Heroku. And now you can just like push to Heroku. You can put, push your Git repository to Heroku and that will spin up uh, the Hero, Heroku build pack and everything for it. So I can say, git push Heroku uh, main. And this should create uh, or like push all of our code up to Heroku. And then we should be able to see it by going to this automate video.herokuapp.com thing. The Ruby version you're trying to install doesn't exist on this stack. So we're trying to use 2.6.3 on Heroku 20. So by default, it created it on Heroku 20, but it doesn't have that on there. So I wonder if we need to change the build pack. This I've never actually run into this issue, so this is interesting. Uh, so let's see what we might have to do here. All right, we wanna look at how to change the stack. So Heroku stack set, and then the, the kind that you want. So let's just say we want Heroku 18, and that should be fine. Uh, git push Heroku master. And let's see what happens. Oops, main. Old habits die hard. Okay, so it's pushing up again. It's gonna try again to build this. All right, looks like it got through the Ruby bit. Now it's installing our gems. Okay, cool. So uh, this is the the upload completed successfully. Um, and now we should be able to see something here. And so if we open up automatevideo.herocoapp.com, we see a big uh, error message that says something went wrong. So we need to do a couple of things. Number one, we have to uh, migrate the database. We can say Heroku run. And then this allows you to just like execute a bunch of stuff on the Heroku box. So we're gonna say rake db migrate and um, we'll also need to update our key, our master key on Heroku so that it is able to decrypt our secrets, our encrypted secrets. And so this is a value that's stored in config slash master key. Uh, and when you're working in development, that is the value that's used to decrypt that secrets file. So if we look here and go to config, uh, credentials.yaml.encrypt, right? Like this file is encrypted using this master key. So we're gonna, we're gonna cat out that master key and pipe it into, or like set it on Heroku as an environment variable so that we're able to decrypt those secrets. All right, cool. So if we, if we refresh the page now on automatevideo.herokuapp.com, we see our, uh, our video here and it's mostly up and running, but this error that we're seeing here is likely because we haven't decrypted those secrets. So, so if we ran um, Heroku logs-t, that allows us to tail the logs. 
then if we refresh this page, we should see the, the errors that are happening. And so um, we can see the requests that are coming in. This one is a 500. We don't really get very much detail other than the fact that it's a 500. So generally what I will, what I will do is I'll set up um, and connect an app called Paper Trail uh, to, to help with logging. But for now, I know that we still haven't set the master key for decrypting. So let's do that next. Um, so what we need to do is uh, it's like Heroku. Um, let's just Google it here. Heroku set master key for Rails. Because I want to see if there's like a, an easier way to do this other than just printing out the string. Um, okay, here we go, here we go. This is what I was looking for, so I don't have to show you what the actual value is. Let's see what happens. Um, Okay, well, sure, it printed it out there. <laughs> I'll have to, uh, to hide that. But now that the master key is set, if we come back to automate video.herokuapp.com, um, we should have our API keys set. So if we, the other thing too is that if we attempt to connect to YouTube, YouTube doesn't know about this domain. And so it's going to, it's probably gonna fail. So if we go to like, um, we have to go into our YouTube uh, API console. And from inside of the API console, we have to set it up to know so that it knows that we uh, are able to redirect from this specific domain. Right now it's only configured to work with localhost. So we need to set up that, that domain. Credentials. Um, okay, so here's where we want to add a, a URI. Okay, so we're going to say HTTPS colon slash slash, and then we're going to add in this, um, the Heroku domain that we just created for this Heroku app. And then ultimately we'll, we'll put in a URI for our, our actual live production domain. I have not actually purchased a domain. This is like one of the first times I've deployed to Heroku, but ha don't have a domain already purchased. So now if we refresh this page and click on connect to YouTube, look at that. We're brought over to YouTube and now I can say, yes, this is the, the account that I want. Ah, but we're redirecting back to localhost 3000. So we have a bug in our um, YouTube sessions controller is just redirecting to local host. So um, we need this to be like if rails.env.development go there else. And I'm just going to keep it simple. I know that technically you can, like, I think we can use URL for here. Uh, let's actually, let's try that. Let's try that. Um, URL for um, and then it's going to take in the action, which is uh, YouTube sessions. And oh, what was it before? <laughs> um, callback, right? Yeah. Okay. So URL for action is YouTube sessions and, or this is the controller and the action is callback. All right, let's see if this works. So if we're running locally, then the redirect URI should be bringing us back to localhost. So we should be redirected back to localhost, and we were. And then if we deploy this change um, to back to Heroku, then this will like repush all of our code to Heroku and will allow us to hopefully redirect back without needing to set up that URL four situation. I, th I can't remember if that URL four will know, actually there's no way it needs, it's gonna know the domain. So we need to like set, um, we have to set up the domain. I think it's part of action mailer. Uh, so let's just go look around here. So mailer, um, 
Yeah, so config action mailer default URL options is I think what we need to set. So let's go over here to config application, no, config environments production mailer. Okay, so it's just it's just the host. So um, host is as the Heroku app and we should be good to go. Okay, so it looks like it was deployed. Refresh the page. So every time it deploys, it's gonna take a little bit of time for the first request to load up and that's because it's like booting up the ephemeral box that this thing lives on. So we click connect to YouTube. Um, your URI doesn't match your whatchamacallit. Maybe this needs to be HTTPS. Where did we go? Oh, you know what? We're missing the callback bit here. Okay, save. Okay. Go here. All right, so now we're connected on Heroku. We've connected to our, our YouTube account. So now if I ran Heroku run, um, actually, yeah. Heroku run rake uh, db seed. That'll create um, some of the basic stuff. So the category and some other basics that we've seen before. And then the other piece that we want to do is run our task for fetching uh, the YouTube videos. The other thing I need to do is before I actually share this episode where we're deploying uh, is I want to put a little bit of authentication in front of um, in front of this page. Cause right now, if you land on the domain, you're just going to like have access to change and edit and update the videos, my videos. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I do want to, I want to make it so that like potentially other people could, um, could log in or create accounts and then sync their own videos. But for now, this is still like very much just in development. So Heroku run rake YouTube fetch videos. So this should run um, one of the really cool things that Heroku has is uh, a tool called Scheduler, Heroku Scheduler. And so you can just drop in tasks like this. You can just say like run, like in the scheduler, you would write rake YouTube fetch videos, and then it would just run on a schedule, like on a cron schedule that you define. Now the granularity isn't super great for the scheduler, um, but we'll take a look and see what that supports. It's more than enough for most folks in terms of like automated, basic background tasks. Refresh the page and look at that automate video, automate video.herokuapp.com now has all of our video. So that's pretty sweet. Um, const git in metaprogramming. Um, that's, this is a video that we have that's up. So this, this looks good. We're deployed to Heroku and everything seems to be working great. Thumb, if we go to slash thumb, this is our like little tool for creating thumbnails automatically. So that's looking good. Uh, and yeah, so that's all I wanted to do in this episode was show you how to deploy to Heroku, um, how to look at Heroku logs. Uh, and yeah, let's, you can also open applications. So if I say Heroku add-ons colon open, and then say scheduler, I think this might be a built-in add-on. I might need to add it though. Okay, so we, we have to say like Heroku add-ons create um, scheduler. And let's see if that installs the scheduler for, okay. So it looks like that installed the scheduler and now we can open it with this. Yeah, so we will be coming in here to create a job later that will then fetch, fetch videos and stuff like that. So um, yeah, creating a job is pretty easy. You just say like, okay, I wanna run this thing every day and I want it to run rake YouTube colon fetch videos. And then um, probably at, oh gosh, what is, I don't know, uh, 8 a.m. UTC, and then save the job. And now that'll run every single day at 8 a.m. and it will attempt to fetch the videos. So that's pretty handy and that's how you can create um, create your own background job based on a rake task. And we, I think we created the rake task in like the first, one of the first three videos of this series for video automation. So if you wanted to head back in the playlist and just check those out, um, you would see how to build this 
rake task, which fetches the YouTube videos from the API and then builds those out in just like this very simple list. Um, okay, cool. So that's how we deploy to Heroku. This is where this thing is going to live eventually. We will find a real domain and assign the domain and set that up. And I want to walk through that with you. Um, but for now, this is good. And um, yeah, I know. So yeah, in the next one, I think we're going to do authentication because we need to protect this page so that uh, folks can sign up for new accounts. And then once you have an account, you can connect your YouTube and then start using the, the tools to sync descriptions and sync thumbnails and such. So um, yeah, so we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.